thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the heart of thanksgiving. God, I thank you right now. My trials and tribulations. God, I thank you right now. I thank you because you know all about it, God. You're taking good care of us. You're taking good care of us. You're protecting us right now. And I thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for being in control. You know everything about what I'm going through. And so I say thank you. Thank you for making a way. Thank you for opening doors. Thank you right now. Oh, God, I'm calling on you now. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Oh, some hymns and I just want to ask you one more time does anybody out there love Jesus tonight so one of my favorite hymns just says oh how I love Jesus can you help me sing it tonight
everybody, surely God is good. I'm here to welcome you to New Sweet Home, the Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ online worship experience. We are so excited that you joined us to worship God today in the comfort of your own home. We are a church that loves God, loves others, and wants the world to know it. We are committed to providing a place where the lost are saved, believers grow, the community is embraced, and Jesus is lifted up. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Albert Macklin, and our First Lady, Lady Evelyn Macklin, and the entire New Sweet Home Church family, we welcome you. We welcome you to clap your hands, to stump your feet, and to give God all the praise, the honor, and the glory that he deserves. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and welcome back to New Sweet Home Church of God in Christ. We are the Temple of Deliverance. This is our Sunday morning broadcast and we pray that God's blessing is on your life and that today will be the best day of the rest of your life. Hope you enjoyed us on last Sunday, Mother's Day. What a wonderful time we had sharing love with all of the mothers of our ministry and family and friends. And thank you for joining us last week. We hope you were blessed. And this week is going to be another awesome Sunday with the Lord. And we know that your life is going to be changed forever and you'll never be the same. Get ready to be blessed this morning, not only by the word of God, but by song. It's going to be an awesome day of music, celebration of the Lord's day. And I know the Lord has something very special in store for each one of you, our listeners today. As you are listening, I'm going to ask you to invite some friends along on Facebook Live. Why don't you do a watch party? Why don't you share the link with those that follow your listing on Facebook? And let's tell the whole world about New Sweet Home Church of God in Christ, the Temple of Deliverance. For we believe there's nothing you're in that God can't get you out of. I understand, yes, we are still going through this time of pandemic where our country and world is still in crisis, but we still trust God. We still believe God. And God is getting all the glory and all the praise. I just believe by faith that all things work together for the good. No matter what happens in our life, whether it's this crisis or another one, God's going to be glorified. And so this morning, I want you to prepare your hearts and prepare your mind to receive the blessing of the Lord upon you. This week, we have been in a prayer revival all week long. Our elders and ministers and missionaries have done such a wonderful job on Tuesday night, missionary Tammy Austin was such a blessing to us. On Wednesday night, Elder Michael Billingsley, by God, didn't the Lord use him mightily. Thursday night, Dr. Angela Stovall blessed us under the power of God. And Friday night, our own Elder Terry Austin, my goodness, what a move of God. And so this Sunday morning, we're still in the residue of revival. We are asking the Lord to work on us. Whatever it is that's not like him, as we are seeking him during this time, Lord, fix me and get me ready for the great things you have in store for my life. So God bless you. Sit back, get your family together, get ready to enjoy the blessings of the Lord this Sunday morning. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Get ready to be blessed.
Jesus, I'll never forget. No. today's service and our broadcast this morning. I want to ask you this morning if you would share a love gift on behalf of the Lord's work. As we are going through this time in our country, I believe those of us that are walking by faith, that are believers, the saints of God, ought to make sure that we are partnering with the Lord with our gifts. So when our seed to the Lord declares to him, Lord, I still believe that what you have declared in your word is for my life. And so each of you that are listening to us today, I want you to partner with us today by sowing your love gift, whether great or small. On a normal Sunday at Sweet Home, every member shares a $25 gift along with our tithe. 
And I don't want you to forget God's blessings on your life. Even though we are in crisis in our country, God is still blessing his people. I believe that every time we turn around, God keeps making a way. And so this is the greatest time to be blessed. When you open up your hand and release your seed to the Lord and watch God begin to move in your life in unmeasurable ways. We say at New Sweet Home that this is my seed and I sow in good ground and I expect a harvest from the Lord. Our way is made, our need is met, and the door is open unto us. Go right now to the computer, go right now to your phone, go right now and call us, whatever it takes that's on the screen today. Don't forget this broadcast without sowing your gift today. God bless you. Let's go back into our service. I lost some good friends along life's way. Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay. But thank God I didn't lose everything. Faithful people who said they came in the midst of my crisis, they were never there. But in my disappointment and in my season of pain, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. Here's what never changed. Listen, I never lost my hope. Mm -hmm. I never lost my my joy. I didn't lose my joy. I never lost my faith. Most of all. I never lost my praise. I never lost my praise. Praise. No matter what was going on in my life, I never lost my praise. Through all the ups and downs and through my heartaches, I never lost my praise. No matter what the devil has set up for me, I never lost my praise. But most, most of all, I never lost my praise. I'm still here, yes I am. Through my heartaches and through my tribulations, I'm still right here. Testimony. The devil tried to steal my mind. But I survived the fight. The devil tried to kill me. But I survived in that fight. The devil tried to take my mind. But I survived in that fight. And I'm still here. I'm still here. Yes, I'm still here. Through it all, God kept me. Through it all, God blessed me. Through it all, God kept me. Through it all, God blessed me. And I'm still, I'm still here. Yes, I am. May you be blessed through it all. You're still here. God bless you. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. We will read it together. And see what the Lord will share with us in these next few moments today. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. When you have it, say amen. amen. Let's read together, church, and it declares what? Rejoice in the Lord, Rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Amen. Sometimes. Always. When things are well. Always. When you have money in your pocket. Rejoice in the Lord always and what? And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men that your God is at hand. Verse 6 says what? Be anxious. 
Be anxious for what? Come on, church. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, come on, let your, and thanksgiving what? Let your requests, come on, be made known unto God. Come on, and what? Come on, church. Come on. And your mind where? Come on. And the next verse says what? Finally, my brethren. Come on, church. Come on. Say it. Yes. Say it. Yes. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Come on. And come on. And the shall be with you. And the church said, Amen. On your way to your seat, tell somebody next to you, I know you've been going through a whole lot. Tell them, I know you have been dealing with the whole lot. But tell them, I have one question for you. Come on, talk to them. Tell them, how do you get through what you're going through? Mm -hmm. Tell somebody on the other side, how do you get through? Don't be scared to talk to your neighbor. Come on, if you're scared to them, you shouldn't have sat with them. Tell them, how do you get through what you're going through? In the presence of the Lord. If the truth be told, and mama and daddy said that's what God loves is the truth. And if we tell the truth today, each one of us are dealing with something called L-I-F-E. It's called life. And sometimes in life, Bishop, things occur that are unplanned or rehearsed. Things that may not have been intentional by you, but for some reason the Lord allowed it to be orchestrated that each one of us are where we are. We're going through what we're going through or have gone through what we're gone going through or will go through something else. One thing I've learned, you don't ever have to look for trouble. Trouble has a way of finding you. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me in here today. You've got to understand that life has a way of turning itself in certain angles which allows our life sometimes to get a little unbalanced or a little shaky to where you experience some things that you feel like, how in the world did I get where I am? How in the world have I experienced what I'm going through? I didn't plan this. No one plans trouble, but the Lord allows it to come your way by something called happenstance or the providence of God that you may mature your spiritual man. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me here today. You've got to understand, just like school, we're all in something called the school of life. And as you matriculate through the grade levels, it matures you into a well-rounded person. And there's a lot of immature people in the house of God because you won't pass the test. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help. Tell somebody, pass your test, pass your test. You can just bring this down a little so the ringing will go out. You've got to understand, if you don't pass a test, no test, no testimony. Everybody wants to testify, but you don't have nothing to testify about. You don't like me here today. You, you got to understand, uh, amen, that, uh, amen, you, you, you got to have something to say for God. God uh, didn't save you for nothing, but the Lord declared you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost. Y'all know that scripture? Anybody here know that scripture, church? Anybody know about the Holy Ghost? Acts 1 and 8 says, and you shall receive power after that. 
that? Help me, church. The Holy Ghost, amen, did I say a foreign word? Did I, did I say a foreign word? Has come upon you, and then you'll be a witness, and a witness is somebody that can say, I was there, and I seen it. I was there and I felt it. I was there and I'm an eyewitness that what happened really happened. Hello, somebody. My God. And uh, we've got to learn, church, that the Lord is looking for a witness. He's looking for somebody to go through the storms of life, uh, to go through your life circumstance uh, and a happenstance uh, and not stay there, but matriculate through the levels of your trouble uh, and come out with the victory, a t-shirt, hat, and a sign, uh, and let the world know, look where the Lord uh, has brought me from. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Y'all ain't gonna help me here today. My God, tell somebody, been there, been there, been there. You've got to understand if you are going to get through what you're going through, there's some things here in our text that will help us. The first thing you've got to understand is that praise is necessary. What did I just say? Praise is the secret of your strength to get through what you're going through. And I'm learning the older I get, you don't have to have a whole lot of reasons to praise God. All you got to do is just start thinking of one thing. And when you think of one thing, then all of a sudden something else comes up. And before you know it, your hands are up. Your, your feet are going. Your mouth is giving God praise praise. See, a lot of us have a problem praising God because you grew up and got amnesia. Oh, hello, somebody. And so, because of your amnesia or your dementia in the Holy Ghost, that's why we got a praise team now. See, now we had to move to a praise team to pump and pry and get your mind. Come on, saints, clap your hands. Come on, stand up. Come on, touch your neighbor. Come on, saints, tell God thank you. Lift your hands, sit down, turn around. See, when I was growing up, we didn't have all that. Because uh, the saints came to church with a mind to praise God. Uh, see, when I was a boy, mama and daddy got ready on Saturday for Sunday. Oh, y'all ain't from the country. See, mama and daddy believe, amen, uh, believe that you should remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. They, they had a mindset that said, all right, everybody get up this Saturday. It's time to cut some hair or press some hair. When I was a boy, getting up on Saturday morning was mama, amen, getting dinner ready because they didn't cook on Sunday. They believed that Sunday was the holy day and was to be kept for God's praise and glory. And so, amen, on Saturday, mama was ironing shirts and you smell the smell of the starch hitting the white shirts and the iron going down on the board, amen, saying shh. And then mama had some, amen, Dixie peach and ultra seed on the back of her hand while she was pressing hair next to, amen, in the pot of ham hocks that was boiling and you smell Dixie Peach, amen, and TCB and Ultra Seen through the house because mama was getting some hair ready because on Sunday when we wake up, we're going to the Lord's house. And so now, amen, we've gotten so grown and big that we just give God anything. We don't prepare for the house of God because your mind ain't there. It, it, it has now become religious. It has now, amen, become, uh, amen, more of an obligation than a devotion or a dedication unto your God. And so now you come on Sunday morning like you're doing somebody a favor. Well, if I don't go, they ain't going to do this. And if I, if I don't go, then ain't nobody going to do it. So I guess I got, let me tell you, if you die, somebody else going to do it. 
Hello, somebody. Uh, but you got to understand, church, uh, that rejoicing in the Lord is something that's based on relationship. Uh, praising God is something we do because you have come to recognize that if it had not been for the Lord uh, that was on our side, uh, I don't know where I would be. Uh, see, a real praise is based on your evidence uh, that I know him for myself. Uh, I don't need nobody to pump me. I don't need nobody to pry me. I don't need to know it because mama them do it. I'm praising God because I know him as a healer. I'm praising him because I know him as a deliverer. I know that it was the hand of God that spared my life. When the doctor said I'd never see again, oh my God, it was a God that kept me when I was getting ready to have a nervous breakdown. When I was hearing voices in my head and the devil told me I wasn't going to make it, it was a God that stepped in my life situation and so when you see me in church and my hands go up don't oh my god it's just me reminiscing on where god has brought me from just tell somebody next to you you don't know like i know can we take a few minutes out and let's just think about what God has done? Uh, I dare you to take this the next 20 seconds uh, and just look where God's brought you from. Uh, I dare you to take a few minutes uh, and remember what the doctor told you in the medical office uh, when the doctor said you wouldn't live, uh, when the friend said you wouldn't make it, uh, when the devil told you you was going to die. Uh, just take a few minutes and look back uh, where the Lord has brought you from uh, in order to stir up a prayer Rage down on the inside. Come on, take a few minutes out and give God praise. Glory to God. All right, church. Not only is praise necessary, but secondly, prayer must be your foundation. I told you that praise is necessary. That's right there in verse number four. It says it right there. It says rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. Point number two is right there. Amen. It tells us, amen, don't be anxious for nothing. Verse number six, but in everything, how? By prayer. Now, when I was a boy, I'm so sorry to keep going back there, but I had a great life. Amen, somebody. I had a wonderful life being raised in this church. Hello, somebody. And sad to say that this church is not what it used to be. And it's not what it used to be, not because God has changed. But man has turned it to be what it is. Hello, somebody. Some of the stuff we doing, God ain't called it to be. But we do it because we think it's necessary just to have a church full of folks. But what made the church full was not so much of what we did, but the glory of God that filled the house. When you look at Acts chapter 2, the Bible declared that there were men and women that were outside of the temple and seen the glory and the effects and evidence. See, the evidence is not speaking in tongues. The evidence is the power that allowed you to do what you did. And so there was men outside of the temple from every nation that said, look, this thing is a strange thing. How could it be since it's only, uh, what, the third hour of the day, the sixth hour of the day? But how is it that we see and hear these men speak in a language that ain't even theirs? Hello, somebody. See, the, 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 the Holy Ghost is not only for the believer, but it's for the unbeliever to witness the power of God. Y'all ain't going to help me here today. Amen. But the real, I don't know how I got over there. Let me just let's get a little, come on back on this side. Come on here. Amen. But you have to understand that growing up in the church, some of the greatest times of the glory of God was in the middle of a prayer service. Now, I know some of y'all don't know about a real prayer service because uh, you, you, you like concerts more, but the last thing we need in this day we live in is another concert. We got a president that's stuck on stupid and crazy. Hello, somebody. 
And if we are not careful, Korea will soon be targeting the United States. And so if God don't keep us, oh, y'all ain't helping me in here today. It's only a God keeping us already. I think they're practicing in London and in France what they really want to do to us. And so prayer must be your foundation to get you through. Preacher, how did you get through what you went through uh, when the doctors, amen, did a mistake in surgery and slit me where it really mattered and didn't close me up right and I hemorrhaged and bled for nine days and they didn't know what to do. And when I got up after the ninth day, they told me I'd never see again. And then a few years later, I caught a bacteria infection and lost the next eye. And then just two or three years ago, I go to preach a convocation and get sick on the plane in that other eye and get another rare infection. They don't know where I got it from. And last year, amen, I end up in the hospital having it removed. Preacher, how did you get through? Somebody had to pray for me. Somebody sang a song years ago, said somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time to pray for me. Why is it that you gotta pray so much? Because it's when I pray, God has a way of transcending in the spirit realm and bringing himself in my situation. And when I get up off my knees, I feel better than when I first got down there. Prayer has a way of touching your life in areas you can't touch yourself. God has a way that he will come in your life circumstance begin to rearrange things in your favor the Bible declare that he that calleth on the name of the Lord shall be rescued any man that calls on the name of God God will come see about you somebody help me call Jesus Somebody said, Jesus. Somebody sang a song years ago and said, If you call Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call Jesus, if you call Jesus, when your money is funny, if you call Jesus, when your children are acting stupid, if you call Jesus, when you're sick in your body, he will. He will, he will answer prayer. Somebody touch two or three folks around you and say, pray, 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 pray. Glory to God. Not only is praise necessary, or prayer is your foundation. See, Praying is not you doing all the talking. Prayer is not you coming to God with your Christmas lists. God do this, God do that. I need, I need, I want, I need, I need, I need. God help me do this, do that. Prayer is a foundation that stabilizes your life. It, 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 it's, it, it, it's your communication to God, not only about what you need him to, but the majority of your prayer ought to be praising God. It ought to be you spending time in his presence. God, if you don't do nothing else, you've already done enough. So I just woke up this morning with my mind ready to give you glory because I realized I only got up this morning because you did it. I got my health and strength because you did it. I got activities of my limb because you did it. I got life, health, and strength. I got breath in my body. God, you did it. And so if you don't do nothing else, I just got up this morning to tell you thank you. Somebody shout thank you. It says uh, don't be anxious.
anxious for nothing. The only reason why you anxious is because you ain't praying. The only reason why you're frustrated is because you haven't prayed. Because saints that are in tune with prayer, we realize the scripture in John 14 said, let not your heart be troubled. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach in here today. Let not your heart be stressed out. Don't let your heart be frustrated. Don't let your heart be perplexed. Don't be anxious. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Somebody jump up on your feet and shout, I believe, I believe. See, the problem with the church today is that we don't have no faith. The problem with us is that we don't have faith to take God at his word. If you had faith to take him at his word, this place would be running over with people. You don't have enough faith to follow the scripture and the road map and go into the highways and hedges and compel me. It's time to stop praying. Send him in, send him in, Lord. Send him in. Oh, God's going to send him in. He already did that. And he's doing it through you. The only way this house going to be full is not by him. It's by the saints. When you take what God did for you in here, out there, and let the world see testimony service ain't really made for us. Testimony service is made for you to tell somebody that's not a believer so that they can believe. And the scripture here lets us know, don't you be anxious. Why are you so stressed out? The scripture that cares to us in Psalms, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you disquieted in thee? Hope thou in God. You don't have to be anxious and stressed. You got a God that knows all about it. See, the bottom line, we don't believe God to be who he said he was. Amen. He may not come when you want him, but when he get there, he's going to be right on time. Just tell somebody he's an on-time God. He's an on-time God. I told you that praise was necessary and that prayer was your foundation. But lastly, I want to close with this. What you really need is the presence of God. The scripture declares, amen, and let the peace of God, amen, that passes all. See, peace of God is just one of his characteristics. It's just part of the nature of God that he's peaceable. And where he goes, he brings peace. Hello, somebody. And in the midst of what you're going through, confusion and turmoil, preacher, how am I going to get through what I'm going through? Let me tell you, you can be in a thing but not of a thing. You don't have to be out of it just to be out of it. See, you got to understand there's some things you're going through, God is not going to get you out right now. Because God wants you to be in the fire to be a witness to those looking at you. Don't you remember the three Hebrew boys? Amen. God didn't get them out the fire. But God went in the fire with them. Y'all ain't going to like me here today. And that's what I came to let somebody know. You might not get out the fire right now. But God has a way that while you're in the midst of going through what you're going through, you can be on fire but never get burnt. You can be in the fire and never smell like smoke. You can be in the fire and never be sinned. But the Bible declared the peace of God. The Passes all understanding. Uh, we'll guard your heart uh, and guard your mind. Uh, I want to let somebody know you can make it uh, with the Spirit of God. Uh, see, what you need uh, is another dose of the Holy Ghost. Uh, with the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, you can make it through anything. Uh, the Bible declares whatsoever things are lovely, uh, whatsoever things are just, uh, whatsoever things are pure. Uh, Whatsoever things are honest, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, and the Spirit of God will be with you. I come by the day to let somebody know that God is with you. For the Lord declares, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. He's right there in the midst of your trial. He's right there. In the midst of your tribulation, he's right there standing next to you. Tell somebody, I got God with me.
Somebody said, I got God with me. The scripture declared, I got grace and mercy. So follow me all the days. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here today. You might have forgotten about what God is in your life, but the way to get through what you're going through is take hold of the spirit of God. And when the Bible declared, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, uh, help me out, church, shall be saved. Anybody need more of God? Uh, lift your hand and say, Lord, I need more of you. Hallelujah. I got to close now. Now listen, church, what we need to get through what you're going through, you need a fresh touch from God. The peace of God comes to us by his spirit and his word. Y'all ain't going to help me in here today. And when we are in the midst of his presence, wherever his presence is, his spirit is. And the scripture said, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is freedom. There's liberty. In other words, in the midst of what you're going through, when you get in the spirit realm, when you begin to let the Holy Ghost get stirred up in you, it's got a way of sending the devil the other way. And when we come to church, we come for no other reason but to put the devil under our feet. We didn't come here to give the devil glory. We came to give God glory. Somebody lift your hand and shout glory. Somebody shout glory. I pray that this word that you heard has touched your heart and has blessed your life. I want to introduce you to Jesus Christ today. I don't want us to leave this time together without inviting you into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Come on and just lift your hand right where you are in the presence of your home or your car or if you're on the job, wherever you may be, and just say with me, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus Christ, your son, died for me and on the third day rose again. Forgive me and wash me. Come into my life. Save me and change me. God, I'll serve you all the rest of my days. If you prayed that prayer, I believe the Lord has heard you. Do you believe that by faith? You need to partner with me and give me a call or send me a message and let me know, Reverend Macklin, I confess Jesus today as my personal savior. You need to find you a Bible-believing church somewhere. If you can't find one, I believe I know a good one, the new sweet home, Temple of Deliverance Church. You need to call us and let me partner with you and let me bring you into what God wants to do in your life. God bless you until we shall meet again. We'll see you real soon. Thank you for spending part of your Sunday with us here at New Sweet Home. We hope you were blessed by the word shared by our leader, Pastor Albert Macklin. Our prayer is that something was said that will encourage and carry you through the week. We invite you to join us Monday through Friday for daily prayer at 5 a.m., 12 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. Tuesday night at 7.15 is Bible study, where we are learning to live by the word taught by our leader, Pastor Macklin. Please be sure to see all of our updates, including call-in and Zoom information, on our Facebook page at New Sweet Home Church of God in Christ or on our church website at nshchurch.com. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember, there's nothing you're in that God can't get you out of.